Oh, boom. Pencils down, baby. That's uh, it. You hear that clap? Yeah. It's business. We mean business. We mean fucking business, man. Here we are. Is this 256 already? We are there. We're there. We've um, arrived at 256. Do us a favor. Yeah, man. Subscribe to us. Okay. On, on I've iTunes. I already subscribed to us. Yeah, I have. You know, give I don't us a five-star rating. I know what they're waiting for. I know. Give us a positive text review. Those things help. Remember, we were at 114 last time. 116, baby. What? We broke We what? broke the 115 plane. Man. Isn't that awesome? A five-star rating. You know what time I said fuck the Ramblers? Yes. Take all that back. They have some umbrage with you. I take all you. that back. Well, mm. You, I don't know if they take it back, but I take it. You're back. in some you're in some lukewarm water again. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> oh, am okay. I? We, yeah, we got an email, so <laughs> we, there's something that we, you might you might be. But by the way, Alohio gives us a five star review, Ooh, and it's Alohio. titled "High Energy Eddie Pence." Oh. This is an awesome podcast with discussions on action figures, movies, and video games. Plus, you get the excellent Eddie oh, Pence thanks, man. in high energy mode, less his fears of sharks and foods that include ingredients with fruit. <laughs> if you're a fan of the Ralph Report or Hollywood Babble. On, you will find this to be a really great listening experience. Highly recommended. Alohio, thank you, man. Thank you, man. I That's appreciate or that. Ma'am, I, or ma'am, either one. Man or man. I mean, wh- whatever you or are. They, Alohio, however they, you want to do. Alohio, whatever you want to be defined as. Fuck yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you for joining that? in and following me over here for yes. the Ralph Report. I appreciate that. We very much do. You can email us at ramble at ramblepod.com. We're also on Twitter po- at podcast ramble number one, with the mm-hmm. number one, mm-hmm. and Instagram just at podcast ramble. We have merch. We have a T Public store. That might change though, because Cody, Cody, you has, have an inside. Cody has an inside track mm-hmm. on maybe a better way to do a better this. Better way which to do we that. Still have to yeah. get in on. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, but so yeah, please subscribe to us. Give us a five star rating, positive text review yeah. on iTunes. Do it. We don't know why that matters. It just fucking matters. It matters. So do it. And please uh, pick up our merch. And thank you to everyone who's been modeling the merch. Real quick, somebody posted a picture of them in a ramble mask. That was cool. awesome. That was pretty cool. That was awesome. Real I think quick, was it? Was it Tim? Was it? Down in was Australia. it? It's down in Australia, I think. Oh, that's great. I think it might have been Tim. I'm not sure. Uh, we have a message from Colin Mags. Colin Mags! Hey, guys. been thinking about the shout-out issue. Yeah. And though we all appreciate and enjoy them, but the issue of fitting them in over Ramble content, how about either recording them and putting them at the end of each Ramble over the title card? That way you don't need to spend the time each week. Unless, uh-huh. of course, there's a charge on YouTube time, et cetera. I don't know the rules. You could even have a title card with the, name, with the names on it. Also, pretty please, can you have a topic recap card? At the end of a ramble radio, because if I forgot to write them down, I'm screwed to even post them on Twitter. I'm sure many of us would appreciate that. Thank you for all okay. you do. Call. Hey, thank you. Well, Colin. I wish we'd known that for we recorded two ramble radios. We recorded two of them. <laughs> we recorded next week. But maybe at the end of this episode, too, like we could pr- practice. Yeah, okay. And Cody can we'll put that. on the little thing what yeah. the topics are at the end of the okay. uh, you know because uh, we're learning as we go well, along we go. even uh, even episode 256 we still don't know what we're doing 256 episodes we still have no we're idea still learning. what's happening we still don't know but you know what we do know what do you know you go to hempvita.com you know what i'm talking about oh i know you know hempvita.com hempvita. get this shit all the products the cbd oils that they have the tinctures the gummies the vape mm. juice the vape pods the pet products and the lotions they use broad spectrum cbd oils i've heard that's the best that's the broad only spectrum kind. the only kind now there's some bullshit kind but broad spectrum is the only uh, kind you narrow want. spectrum. Which narrow isn't spectrum good. is bad. Yeah, you want broad that, spectrum. Your dick falls right off. It literally just rots right off with, if you use broad spectrum. Yeah, and then all you can sit there and go, I wish I'd use the We're, broad spectrum. I still have a dick. Nothing. Uh, and if you're a lady, your tits just fall right yeah. off. It's I'm not sure good. Our, our sponsor loves They love <laughs> us. This. They have no <laughs> THC. They're combustible. The combustible <laughs> ones, the flour and the pre rolls, have less than 0.3%. How about that? Hemp Vita only uses industrial hemp grown in the USA! USA and it's organic, no GMOs. Ho! <laughs> CBD is legal. Tough guy. Yeah, hi. All of hemp. I, I gotta finish products. it. I can't do it. I, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm with right. you. Okay. I'm, I'm letting you do it. It's they the meet cat. the 2018 farm bill. Well, fuck him. He's got to learn. Favorite which is signed into law. Favorite farm bill. We talked about this so much. I mean, the 2014 farm bill was. I thought at the time, okay, this is the greatest. Farm Nothing's bill of beating all time. it. But 2018 rolled Killed along. Killed it. I'm like this Killed is the best it. farm bill of all time. It doesn't. Andre, what's your favorite farm bill of all time? Ours is 2018. Yeah. yeah, Farm Bill. 2018. Ours right. is a 2018 Farm Bill, which uh, effectively legalized hemp at the federal level by removing from the federal list of controlled substances and classifying it as an agricultural commodity. How is that not your favorite Farm How Bill? How is it not your favorite Farm Bill? That's Hemp Vita's. It's why we have Hemp Vita sponsoring the Ramble because of that Farm Bill. So you should yeah. probably say 2000. Andrea's favorite, too. Look at that. Right. You know, we're going to let you in. Cody, I'm sorry to do this to you, pal. <laughs> Thank you, honey. See, Andrea's down. We're going to let you in on a, little, on a little Ramble secret. You know, we always talk about how Cody dresses like Marla Gibbs before. Right. Sometimes he'll dress like the 2018 Farm Bill. There, I said. I know, yeah. Cody, it's, it's just truth. And all that should be enough. Right. 
If you, you, you're sold right there. You're, you're already on HempVita.com. But before you buy anything on HempVita.com that you're already on right now, yeah. type in the Ramble. And you get 15% off. So here's what happens. Before, you were just happy at Hemp Vita. Yeah. Now you type in the Ramble, you get 15% off. You know what you're doing? You're standing on the Hemp Vita logo like T.O. did with the star. And you do that. That's what you're doing right dressed now. Dressed as a Niner? Dr- no, no, no. When he was a Cowboy. Oh, when, when he was a Cowboy. Yeah, okay. it's that Not dressed moment. as a Niner. No, that was the bad Because that would be wrong. That would be wrong. <laughs> so there we go. HempVita.com. Please check them out. Um and there we go. And here we are. The ramble back to 56. You know, um, where are we at? No, we still have a little bit of time. Can I open up my go. pulse spot? My Hasbro you pulse box? Do that? Fuck yeah. Right. Look at this. We got it. We're going to do an opening here. Cody, you excited about this? You get to see an action figure get opened up right before your very eyes. Ooh, right. Look oh. at that. Look at. And this is a man. I'll make you guys full screen. Oh, oh shit. Are you really you're really sacrificing your airtime for this? What? Yeah, I don't. I mean, you, know you don't what, have to. What's Man, cool that's... about this is we actually purchased this while on a Ramble radio. We oh, did. I remember this is the one that I tr- I, I trigger fingered yes. this thing. Yeah. So you're seeing it's coming full circle now. You're the most seeing... exciting moment in Ramble history. It might, it's up there. You it's saw the there. birth of this purchase, right there. And now there. you get to see uh oh oh our, the fruits of our labor. By the way, rest in peace, the great Jerry Jeff Walker, Mister Bojangles. We lost him. Oh this look at this! Oh this is gorgeous. Oh, this box, I, I felt oh, bad opening oh, it. Oh, man. Look at this. Look at you. Let's hold this Look at up. that puppy. That alone, the Black Series, oh, it's the armorer from, oh, oh, from uh, Lord. the Mandalorian. Look at that. Look at her. Look at her. She comes with all the fucking shit you need to build Beskar armor. Aloe right will like this because he liked the action figure, or she, or he, or they. Who? Aloe, oh, that That's right. Because they talked Fuck, about action yeah. figures, so look at that. Boom. Boom. I'm going to put that right. Sorry, this is going in front of everybody. Whoa. This is the way. This is the way. What else could it be? Look at that. Fucking beautiful. Dude, I had some gnarly garlic uh, sausages. It's okay. So I'm, I'm immune to, to it now. And blow we'll it away from we've you. been here for an hour. To not so not stink up the place. The other recordings, I got immune to it. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's like, Phil, I love garlic yeah. stuff. I just hate what it does to your breath. It does everything in. bad to your breath. It's awful. Tracy and Colton sweat it out of their skin. Yeah. People do that, too. And it smells. Is that bad? So too? bad the next yeah, day. I know. I know. I, I, w- I just did, like, tons of mouthwash before he showed up just to hope and pray. Does it give you the shits? No. No. Thank God. That's good. It's Cody, does problem. garlic give you the shits? Let's, let's get a poll here. Uh, no, I love garlic. Yeah. Andre, does garlic give you the shits? Definitely and why not. are you wearing a shirt that says garlic gives me the shits? <laughs> and yeah, that's weird. Garlic gives me the shits. <laughs> I, why it's are you wearing that shirt? Line. Then that makes no and sense. And then on the back of the shirt it says, "And Schmerelson gives me gives it to me quick." <laughs> and then it says, "Garlic gives me the shits." And Schmerelson gives it to me quick is on the back of her shirt. You know what's weird? So Andre and I went on a on a couple's walk around the neighborhood. Aww. It's very nice. We start to and we, there's really nice houses in this area. Yeah. You know, like that Agnes and Ben. Uh, but you know what they all have? What? Vote Schmerelson signs. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So we're thinking he lived right over there somewhere. Please tell me you stole a vote Schmerelson sign. We're signs. thinking about it. Come we're on. thinking about it. Yeah. Schmerelson. I know. So I'm like, well, this guy's popular. If new Ramblers tune in, Scott Schmerelson is the uh, district uh, superintendent for of, the schools of the or some schools shit. In the valley. school board something school board in the valley that yeah. andrea has been seen behind jerry's back for some well not so much behind my back. no it's kind of out in the open time. yeah it's their, their affair is is wide open Scotch. so this uh this is yeah next oof. tuesday vote schmerelson next tuesday man oh nine minutes what wait eight minutes and 53 seconds that's enough that's right enough. okay we can run the clock out now do you see lyrics up here do you see a website opened up with lyrics no all right, I'm going to try to go raw dog on this. You're going to raw dog this? I'm going to try this. All right, but let's get the theme song playing. And if you know the words, sing along. All right, let's see if I can do this. Friday night I crashed your party. Saturday I said I'm sorry. Sunday came and trashed me out again. I was only having fun. Wasn't hurting anyone. And we all enjoyed the weekend for a change. I was stranded in a combat zone. I walked through Bedford style alone, even rode my motorcycle in the rain. And you told me not to drive, but I made it home alive. So you say that only proves that I'm insane. Everyone, you may be right. 
I may be crazy. Whoa, but it just may be a lunatic you're looking for. Bam, I think I got it. I think you got it. That was impressive. Thank you. That was no no lyrics, lyrics, there was no baby. Lyrics there. That means I know my Billy Joel. You do. You may. What is album that, is that from? Glass Houses. Is that Glass Houses? Because remember the open. It's, okay, Cody, I need your input on this too. Are All you right. familiar with the, that song, You May Be Right, Billy Joel? Yes. Are you familiar yes. with that album, Glass Houses? Not entirely. Okay, well, you Google the album cover. Okay. And I'm going to do the same. And it's kind of, I don't know. I don't now. I just don't know if the opening of You May Be Right on the album is the best joke or the dumbest joke. Because mm. there's your album cover. Yeah. Billy Joel standing in front of a glass house Getting ready to throw a rock. With, a, with a brick in his hand, yeah. a rock in his hand. So the opening to You May Be Right is like Stone Cold. It's just, <laughs> just glass shatter. So as soon as he shatters the glass, the song, you're, you're so you, the so you're So it actually follows through with the cover. So the cover has him loading up. Yeah. And, and then, then the you, first song is like. Is <laughs> cheesy or not bad? Why not? Why not? Why not? Cody, thoughts? Cheesy, not bad? It's not bad. Not I'm, bad. This I'm doesn't work if you hit that. shuffle. Doesn't work if you hit shuffle. The back in then, you couldn't, back though. Back then, you couldn't. You, you had to pop play. on that vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> but but nowadays, with shuffle, doesn't yeah. make any sense. That's, that's true. You may be right. That's a jam right there. Is that his best song? Cody. Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. It's a great song. one. I, I'm a big fan of my life. Uptown Girl. Uptown Girl. <laughs> 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 All, you when hear us all the way out there? When I was singing or wow. talking? Singing or talking? Singing. We got to stop giving this shit away for free. I know. The whole building here is it before we it gets released. The neighborhood. I was reading poster heads out their doors. Is that Billy Joel? couple people jacking off. Oh, of course. <laughs> I was I jacking bet. off. See, Eddie was. I bet Cody was. Wow. Ooh. Honey. Ooh. She ratted out a few neighbors that were jacking wow. off. Wow. Oh, oh, uh, oh, you may be right. Bah, bah, mm. bah, bah. Mm. What a fucking song. Um. Here we are, Ramble 256, man. And Cody, do you, is the Jack Palance thing that we teased yes. ready to roll from Ramble Radio, the villain of Tango and Cash? My little Tango. Now, is ta have, you, now have you heard it while you were prepping it, or did you just catch the beginning to make sure it was the right one? I just, I just caught it. I have not heard it. Would this have been better if it was a scene in Tango and Cash? So I think he would have been a better villain. Now, the, I don't know what he's doing <laughs> in this. I don't know what Jack Palance is doing. But God damn, does he go the fuck off on this part. It's hilarious. All Are right. we ready? Yeah, yeah let's go. <laughs> okay. Look, we're going to do this for a little while, and that's it. Because I am not going to do it the way you want. I will never be able to do it your way. I can only do it my way. I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, lady. I'm not doing it any way other than the best that I can do. Is that it? If you are not satisfied oh. with my best, oh. then that's too fucking bad. <laughs> So we're going to have to reach a solution or a resolution very soon. You cannot keep telling me what you think is the better thing, the better thing, the better thing, because I don't even know who the hell you are. And after 50 fucking years in this business, I'm not going to take all the interpretations from you. You asked me to do this. You didn't tell me that I was going to have to sit here and take all of these goddamn directions from you. You didn't tell me that, did you? Which I'm doing now. So let's do this thing and know that we are... Uh, getting close to uh, burnout. Now, this is my favorite. Look, we're oh, is that, was that's, there that was the end? Oh, yeah. yeah, so it ends. So, okay, in, in, in the, I have the longer play, and at the end of it, I sw it's my favorite part. He goes, burnout. And then there's this pause where she is clearly trying to, and he goes, ah, bullshit. You love everything, but, 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 but. That's loving nothing. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> There's oh there's a longer version here. Let me let me yeah, see. Let's right. see if has the nab that in. He goes, he goes ah bullshit. You love everything, but 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 but. That's loving nothing. That's loving nothing. But Jesus That's loving nothing. <laughs> like what the fuck? I want to know what that was from. All right, hold on. Oh, here we go. Is this it? Could this be it? Crazy shit. All right, here we go. All let right, me this is it. redo this here. Jack Palance. Screen share. Town. Share audio. Yeah. All right. Which I'm doing now. So let's do <laughs> this animated. thing and know that we are uh, getting close to uh, burnout. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Ah, bullshit. You love everything, but, 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 but. That's loving nothing. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what she was saying. That's loving. Well, look, I'm sorry. I love all, I love your work. Like, I love everything you do. Out of here, but, 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 but. That's, that's loving nothing. Loving nothing. Yeah. Is that should that be the new ramble tag? Yeah. But, 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 but. That's loving nothing. That's loving nothing. Cash. I want to know what that was for, man. Children's book. Had it to, had to have been a children's, be book. Sort of children's book. Jack planted the beanstalk. <laughs> <laughs> he took his magic beans. He took his magic beans. <laughs> Put them in the dirt. Up rose a giant beanstalk. Every five minutes, a child is born in this country with AIDS. We're doing everything we can. <laughs> Listen, we're doing Look, everything. Look, lady. <laughs> we're doing everything we can to save the children. Holy shit. Look, lady, it's the way I'm going to do it. If we're going to feed the homeless, we're going to need your help. Look, lady. <laughs> you can have your interpretations, but you hired me to do I. <laughs> Oh, God. It's not right to beat a woman. If you strike a woman, if you're a woman who's ever been hit by a man, there's help out there. There's a phone. Look, lady. Look, childhood obesity <laughs> is not a heavy matter. Look at the bellies on all these stars. That's like my, uh, my second favorite uh, now voiceover meltdown. Do you, You've heard the Casey Kasem one, oh, right? Oh, that's the best one ever. That's the, the, that's Casey the classic. Casey Kasem. You've heard that one, right, Eddie? Uh, Come on. I don't know. I, I got to find that if you it, haven't It's heard a it. long distance death dedication, right? It's for a little dog named Snow. It's for a little dog. Right? That's the one, right, Cody? Uh, yes. Those yes. Do, I know it's how they the died. the best one ever. Oh, God. It is. You know I what have knows? it here if you want to hear it. Let's do it. This is a infamous. Have you not heard this yet? I probably have. All right, I'm here comes to. Robin from the Super Friends, Cliff Jumper, Shaggy from Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, here we go. Do you remember he would do the death dedications on the top 40? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. would die, and they'd want, like, yeah. love lift us up where we belong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, we're up to our long-distance dedication. <laughs> and this one is about kids and pets and a situation that we can all understand, whether we have kids or pets or neither. It's from a man in Cincinnati, Ohio, and here's what he likes. Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. He was a little dog named Snuggles, but he was most certainly a part of... Let's come start again. I'm coming out of the record. Play the record, okay? Please. See, when you come out of those up-tempo goddamn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. And then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but goddamn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a goddamn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a fucking up-tempo record every time I do a goddamn death dedication. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. This a god last goddamn time. I want somebody who uses fucking brain to not come out of a goddamn record that is uh, that, that's up tempo, and I got to talk about a fucking dog dying. That is fucking ponderous, man. Ponderous, fucking ponderous. I quote that when I'm twitching all the time. Oh yeah, nonstop I stop music. Rick Dees, let me ponderous. get that phone. All right, you got a special request? Oh. Okay, I want a goddamn concerted <laughs> effort to come out of a record that isn't a fucking up-tempo record That's every time great. I do a goddamn death dedication. No problem. We'll play it for you. Here's the death dedication just for you. Oh, God. The Shatner <laughs> one's good, too. I, there's a oh, sabotage God. one where he's reading a Star Trek audiobook. Yeah. And the guy's like, he's like... Uh, He's talking, and then the director's like, oh, could we try that again? Uh, you, you, the the voice, he's trying to be cute, the director. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems to have affected you. You've, you've hailed fellow well met. Is there any chance? And Shatner, the guy finishes his direction, and you just hear like a pause, and he goes, oh, please don't tell me how to do this. <laughs> it sickens me. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then he goes, Spock, sabotage the system. Spock, restore the atmosphere. Spock. Sabotage the system, and then the guy goes, uh, "Can we do lines one thirty-eight? Can you?" He said, uh, "Sabotage." Can you say sabotage? And he goes, "I don't say sabotage. You say sabotage. I say sabotage." <laughs> like, it's <laughs> sabotage. Like, it's my word. It's my word now. <laughs> like, I, I, own that word. I, I made up the word. It's, it's a fucking. <laughs> oh, there's Ooh. some great ones, man. Crazy, crazy. 
Jeez. They fuck it. He loses it. He, Casey doesn't want any bullshit. Oh, fucking ponderous. Up-tempo number. I, d- I do that every time I'm playing my Twitch games. To those who watch me on Twitch, when you always hear me go, ponderous, man. Fucking ponderous when I'm playing a level. That's what that's in reference to. There we go. Let's start singing, shall we? Do we get into this fucking episode? Fucking Are we doing start this? Start the show. Bam! What hat? Hall of Fame hat. Spooky time. Oh, what hat would they wear? We're getting close to Halloween. I know we are. Is this airing on Halloween? No. Oh, Halloween's on a Saturday. Halloween's on a so no. So way off the mark. Way off the mark. Boy, I was way off. Damon ba- Damian Batriel, good day, Ramblers. Melbourne Rambler, Damon Batriel, or pause for Eddie here. What do you want to call him, Damian Batriel? Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, DB. DB. I think <laughs> after a tough couple of months dealing with the lockdown to contain coronavirus in the state, we are starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. The two-week average has dropped around five cases. And Jesus, five. Wow. Nice. And That's the government nice. is slowly easing things What's back. What's it like to have a functional government? It's so weird. It must be nice. Thoughts and prayers to Eddie after the sad news of swings and misses. Well, Getting thanks, Marty Janetti to the barbershop window. But then again, yeah. okay, this is where we have some problems. Okay. You did say on the Ralph Report this week that bumped Ralph up to being your favorite podcast. <laughs> Felt like a thinly veiled <laughs> fuck the fuck, Ramblers. Fuck the Ramblers. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay, I need to explain something. Uh, uh, I the Ramblers explain, are listening. I need to explain myself. All I did was like, I think it was a month ago. Right. I sent out a tweet. Hey, check out the three podcasts I'm on. Right. I listed them in happenstance <laughs> order. It's not fuck the ramblers. Take that down. <laughs> I just simply put swings and misses, Ralph Report, and the ramble. Right. I just listed them. I didn't right. have any way, shape, or form. There was, there was no ranking. It's not a ranking system. Right. I just right. simply listed them. Sure. Sure. Then I got a bunch of shit from Ralph people oh, saying, no. oh, that's Ralph tweets out, oh, number two, I see. I'm like, it's not how it was. Oh, number no. Two. And then so what I do, swings and misses gets canned. I'm on the Ralph Report last week. I make a joke about it, trying to lighten number my one. mood. Sure. Because my I lost my job. Right. So I'm like, hey, guess what? This is now my favorite podcast. Right. Well, it's not ranked. I, I just have a feeling I know what all the ramblers are I saying know. Right now. They're going to create their own fucking narrative. Well, right now they're all going, ah, bullshit. But, 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 you care for nothing. <laughs> That's loving nothing. That's loving nothing. <laughs> he puts it, TV show horror Hall of Fame hat has to go to the creepy, kooky, altogether spooky Adams family. Yeah. Nathan Wallace, the dubs? N dubs? Dubs? N dubs. Do we call them N dubs? N dubs. Yeah, N-dubs. I like that. N dubs. He says Twilight Zone. Okay. Uh, Michael, newcomer, don't call me Wormer. Don't call him Wormer. Wormer. The Hall of Fame TV show theme, Adam Family. It's two for the AF. Two for the AF. I was leaning towards Tales from the Crypt, but nothing is more iconic than the of the Adams Family. That's very true. Josh Stetz. While songs like the Adams Family and the Munsters are timeless, I got to go more modern and say Stranger Things. The synth is equally groovy and creepy at the same time, and whoever thought to lay the vocal track to Bonfire by Childish Cambino over it is fucking genius. Graham and Faye and Brianna. Greeting from the Great White North, fellow Ramblers. Although, whilst looking forward to an approaching New Year's for 2021, what if midnight New Year's shows a tweet from Positively Ghostbusters? I have an idea. What if at midnight this year's New Year's, everyone blasts Jackie Wilson's Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher as a way to positively charge all the negative slime that's flowing under the United States? Oh, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Logic is sound. Couldn't I'm with hurt. You there. We couldn't Could hurt. not hurt. Could not hurt. Graham and Faye, they say Rod Serling walks up to the Ramble Hall of Fame podium, hands the evil commish a red MAGA hat that's confirming that we are actually are living in an episode <laughs> of The Twilight Zone. Inexplicably, the Twilight Zone theme begins to play. <laughs> Brianna then rolls out, it's 2020 after all, a stroked out Tim Curry dressed Aww. in drag and proceeding to breaking a rousing sing-along of sweet transvestite from Transylvania <laughs> with the Ramble crowd. And then bonus, you gotta look this up, Cody, I'll send it to you too. He sends a Mondo poster of the twilight zone classic episode time enough at last for cody it's a badass looking poster um patrick carruthers pc yes hey ramblers hall of fame pad horror tv theme twin peaks haunting and ethereal and then michael's son caleb hey guys it's me caleb haven't run in for a long time so i figured i'd run in during spooktober anyways moving on hall of fame i have to go with the gravity falls theme well it's technically not a horror show it has horror elements so i say it counts and then his proud pappy michael s miller hey guys hope all is well with everybody good enough here took my son caleb to see the original nightmare on elm street last night it was his first horror movie in a theater experience yes in a theater cinemark theaters are open here in ohio they're mostly just showing old movies with limited capacity required masks etc last week we saw the nightmare before christmas there may be a dozen people in each viewing that's not too bad that's not bad okay so here are my entries for this week horror theme horror the tv show theme song i'm conflicted here my head says twilight zone but my heart says the monsters so do i listen to my head or my heart well my heart wants what the heart wants the monsters uh, gotta do what the heart wants <laughs> i'm not gonna lie the monsters was tough not picking that 
Yeah. That is such a fucking. Da, 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 da. That is a great da, fucking da, 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 da. jam. Man, Charles man, Phillips man. is a lifelong CK. Bills fan. We've learned to deal with it and look for the fact that we have four NFL records and the only team to have gone to the Super Bowl for consecutive years doesn't matter that we lost them. <laughs> Hell of Fame horror TV theme, Adam Sandler. It's on everybody's instantaneously recognizes man, man, it. Man. And you have to snap along. Man, man, man. We have Idea Man chiming man, in. Man, man. The hat should go to the Night Gallery theme. It's weird, spooky, unsettling, and okay. perfect. Okay. Colin Maddox, Jerry, Eddie, Cody. Hope you're all doing well. We Here are. Submissions. Thank Kinda. you. Kind of. Hall of Fame, X-Files. Brilliant theme that set the tone of the show perfectly. Darren Butler, hey guys, thanks for the laughs. Love Jizz Talk. I'm part of the Jizz Nation now. Hey man, the Jizz Nation keeps growing. Yeah. Uh, Hall keeps of Fame spreading. keeps it's spreading. Exploding, spreading. It's exploding. There it is. It's Cody. exploding all it's over exploding the Exploding and spreading. You guys got it. I got to put American Horror Story. The music just scrapes the inside of your brain. The American Horror Story theme. All right. Okay. Dustin Jacobs. He goes Twilight Zone. Do, 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 do. I had to go Tales from the Crypt. Really? Danny Elfman. I went, I went Twilight Zone just because it's so so iconic, culturally significant. Yeah. Where it's just like anytime something weird happens, you go do 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 do. Like you true. just automatically go to that. I did give an honorable mention to the Munsters because I, you know, yeah, that's a jamming song. But yeah. I'm just saying Twilight something Zone's that elicits that feeling of spooky. Oh and yeah, weird. You go do 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 do. Cody. I went with what I think is maybe the best TV theme, period, uh, which is The X-Files. That's a great one. Great, great theme song. That's a great one. Now, look at us. All went different. I went went Danny Elfman. That's what's great about the Cody dropped X-Files. You went with Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone theme is responsible for the greatest cold open in movie history, I think. The Twilight Zone movie with Dan Aykroyd and uh, What's-His-Face. Fuck, how am I forgetting? Fucking ordinary, fucking, you know, fuck, Albert Brooks. Yeah. Have you seen that, Cody, the Twilight Zone movie? You must see something scary. Mm-mm. Cody! I can't burn it. I have to, he has to watch it. I can't tell him this. Yeah. Cody, I can't, I can't, I can't spoil this. You, that, it, the Twilight Zone movie. I well, want to see John Landis kill someone. You so. do get to see John yes. Landis murder somebody. Um, you do. You do get to see. And, uh, it is a great cold open, though. It's a, the cold open is the best, my, one of my favorite cold openings. Should I just tell Cody, or do you think you should see it? Cody, what would you prefer? Hmm. I don't care either way. Hmm. Should I tell him? He doesn't care. All right. Don't. Yeah, I guess tell him. So the opening scene is Albert Brooks and Dan Aykroyd. Comedy legends are mm-hmm. driving in the pitch black middle of the night. Aykroyd was a hitchhiker that Albert Brooks picks up. And they're driving and they're just remembering their favorite TV show themes from, you know, they're just singing along like, you know, like classic, you know, uh, Leave it to Beaver and all that shit. And then they go, oh, I remember the Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah. And they start singing the Twilight Zone theme. And Albert was like, God, that was a scary show, wasn't it? And Dan Eric was like, oh, man, God, that show scared me so much. And then he goes, hey, here, pull over. Come on, pull over real quick. So, okay. So Albert Brooks pulls over and Dan Eckert goes, you want to see something really scary? And he's like, okay, I guess. And then Dan Eckert kind of turns. And he goes, no, it's not, just, just, just. And then he, he can't see him. And then he turns back, and he's just this demonic alien who starts eating Albert Brooks. And then the camera just pans up to the sky, and the actual Twilight Zone theme song plays. It was such a great opening. Yeah. So fucking killer. Get you oh, right into what you're I mean, right in. Is, you want to see something really scary? <laughs> and then do 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 Oh, it was fucking killer. But then, was the Spielberg one the biggest letdown of those? Which was that? Kick the can. He did the kick the can one. It was just like, uh, all right. It I'm was trying to remember all the different ones. It was the one with the girl with no, uh, the, she had the, the with the no little mouth. brother. Yeah, that the, was the a, no I think that was the last one. Little brother, little kid, anything he wished for, he yeah, got. Yeah, that so was a to shut it. One. That was a great one. And then I think they cold open with the John Landis one, don't they? Did they? I think that was the first one. Was Landis? I think the I think the Landis one was the first one. I thought it was just three. I haven't seen. That I don't. Movie it's so been long. so long. Not bad though. But the Spielberg one is the only one. I was like, all right, it's just you know, it's because it's not scary, right? It's just. It's just like a kind of a heart warmer trying yeah. type of thing. But so Ramble two fifty seven, David Lynch goes into the I've directed a movie Hall of Fame. What movie is on David Lynch's hat? How about that? Okay. We gonna go Dune That's easily? <laughs> I mean, I no mean, question. How can you not? How can you not go Dune? It's got to be. Um, Cody, how many Lynch movies have you seen? Hmm, not many. Oh, dude, man, w- w- which ones do you know that. you've seen? Take a look. Mulholland Drive? Haven't seen Mulholland Drive. Wild at Heart. I like that movie. Uh -uh. Blue Velvet? I like Wild at Heart. Wild at Heart's a good one. I think The Elephant Man. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yep. Elephant Man's Uh, good. Let me keep looking here. 
Oh shit, Eddie, I got a huge favor for what? you. What? It may it may just be the Elephant Man. Oh, oh shit. You got to start watching some lynchers. All right, do you mind plugging that in? He almost that directed mode? Return of the Jedi. Almost did. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. He almost did. But he got a headache as ooh, as Lucas was explaining what was happening in the fucking... What, oh. Whoa, 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 wait, I, oh, whoa. There we go. As Lucas was explaining to him <laughs> what the movie was going to be, he was like, I want out. I don't, want, I don't give a shit about any of this. But then he went on to do Dune, which uh, I think he probably would have rather have done Return of the Jedi. What do you think? I don't know, right? <laughs> I think he probably think he regretted after Dune came out not doing Return of the Jedi. I think he's like, oh, I probably should have done. Probably. I should have hopped on. But that I one. don't know if a, a David Lynch Return of the Jedi is something I would have wanted. I don't know. I know. I know. Hey, I thank mean, you for doing I'm that. I'm not. Way. It's my least favorite of the three original. Yes, same. I think. I, oh, by I, I would have liked to see Spielberg direct that. Yes. Just to see what was he that? Done. Was that ever on the table? Yeah, but it he couldn't was. do it because Directors Guild. That's right. That's right. Um, That's right. I would have like seen uh, Kirshner take another shot at third installment. Why didn't he? I think Director's Guild stuff. Ah, that's true. Ik, Ik was his nickname, right? Yeah, Ik. The Ick. That's what Ick. I called him. Icky. Ick. Ick. Hey, Ick. Icky. What's up, Ick? Icky. What's the haps? <laughs> All right, open close encore time. You guys ready for this? Uh-huh. Cody, excited for this one? No, Spooky I. Songs. I was a bit stumped by this. Come one. on! I, I didn't do. I because I mean, what does that even mean? Exactly. Spooky song. <laughs> exactly, Cody. That's what it exactly. Open, close, and uh, on. Here we go. Harmonica time. Mm. Wow! Just letting the world know. Mm. Letting the world know mm. what is happening there. Letting the okay. world know. So this is songs that have any kind of. Spooky theme to it. Maybe we'll see. Let's see. Well, let's see. Let's see what you had to say. You, the Rambler, uh, Damien Botriel. It's full Bobby Boris Pickett. Opens Whoa. with Monster Mash. Okay. Closes with Monster Swim. Encores with Monster wow. Rap. Eddie can confirm these are actual they real are. songs. They are real songs. Nathan Wallace, it's, Bloodletting. It's sad. You open with the vampire song Bloodletting by Concrete Blonde. Open the show with Black Sabbath. Closing with song with the song Black Sabbath. The lights go out. You hear. The One Two Krugers coming for you song, followed by the Fat Boys with Robert England performing <laughs> Are You Ready for Freddy? Followed by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince to perform A Nightmare on My Street. Nice. Michael Newcomer, don't call me Worm and Wormer. You open with Magic, Mick Smiley from Ghostbusters. Uh, you close with Nightmare on My Street, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. I love his encore, Nature Trail to Hell in 3D. Nice, nice. Josh Stets, you open with Monster Mash, something light and silly to set to start things okay, off. Okay. You close with Alec, Alice Cooper hitting the stage for Welcome to My Nightmare. Ooh. You encore with the actual zombie of Michael Jackson crawling out of the ground <laughs> to do Thriller. At the end of the show, MJ's doing all of his spinny, twitchy, crotch-grabby dance moves to drag out the finale, and Alice rolls the guillotine out on stage and saves everyone from the imminent zombie apocalypse. By beheading the king of pop. Wow. He really paints Cooper as a big time hero yeah, in this big dress. <laughs> the spooky songs. 70s Italian film composer. I've made this song for the film. It is hauntingly beautiful. A 70s Italian director does a comically large line of cocaine. Okay, fuck, perfect. We'll use it for the scene where the woman has her face burned off with the blowtorch. Ooh. That from Graham and Faye and Brianna. Wow, Graham and Faye. <laughs> Hilarious. Jesus. That's a tweet from Zero Suit Camus. Faye says, you open with Screaming Jay Hawkins, I Put a Spell on You. Okay. Close with Ray Parker Jr. Ghostbusters. Of course. Encore with Thriller. Very close to mine. Yeah, mine is very, very close, close to that, Faye. too. Very close to that, uh, too. Iron Maiden, Brianna, opens with Run to Ooh, the Hills. You close nice. with the Suspiria soundtrack, Death Valzer. You encore Rocky Horror Picture Show, Let's Do Brianna the just made me reevaluate my three. She did, didn't yeah. she? Graham, you open with Monster Mash, Bobby Pickett. You close with Warren Zevon. Ah, ooh. Werewolves of London. You encore with Sheb Woolley, One Eyed, One Horn, Flying mm. Purple P-Ball Leader. Patrick Carruthers. You PC. open with Where PC. 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 Open with Werewolf of London by Warren Zevon. You close. This one, I'm pissed I didn't pick. I forgot all about it. Tonight is the Night of the Vampire. Night of the Vampire by Rocky Erickson and the Aliens. You encore with Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath. Caleb. You open Jason's theme from part three. You close with Michael's theme from Halloween. Encore, Whatever Happened to Eddie by Butch Patrick, mm. a.k.a. Eddie Munster. <laughs> Michael S. Miller, you open with Thriller. Close with Rockwall of Michael Jackson, rocking the fuck out of I always feel like somebody's watching me. Encore with Alice Cooper performing the entire Welcome my, to My Nightmare album from start to finish. Charles Phillips or CP. CP, you open with Monster Mash. You close with Oingo Boingo, Dead Man's Party. Encore, Warren Zevon, Werewolves of London. You can hear this song and can't wait for the howling part. Idea or, Man. Or, or the Kid Rock version. The Kid Rock version is even better. 
<laughs> Play it sweet home Alabama all night long. So you rip off <laughs> two songs. Two. Like one song. He's shit. Because he, you're a talentless fuck. You're yeah. such a talentless pile of human shit. <laughs> Idea Man, the spooky songs concert should open with Miriam by Nora Jones, which is about a woman getting revenge on the one her husband was cheating on her with after she's killed him. I pushed, I punished him from ear to ear. Now I save the best for you is a fucking terrifying line. Then you close with the Rolling Stones' Gimme Shelter, and you encore with Christoph Pend- Pendrecki's The Theranoti to the victims of Hiroshima. Mm. Ooh. Colin Mags, open the tubular bells, so unsettling and a great tune. You close with the police every breath you take. The stalker creepy. anthem, such creepy lyrics and a song we all enjoyed as a great pop song before we actually find out and listen to the lyrics. You encore with Monster Mash, with Universal Monsters on stage as backup dancers. It's got to be in there, and why not close on fun? Darren Butler, you open the Burn the Flames by Rocky Erickson from Return of the Living Dead. Sad scene guy knows he's turning into a zombie, burns himself in the crematorium while the song plays. Close with Bad Moon Rising by Credence. I first nice. heard it in American Wolf in London and then always played it in the Astrodome. Ah, oh, Andre Rising. When he played for the Houston Oilers. That's right. That so it's moon to rising, scary. right? Bad Moon Rising. Yep. So it's personally scary. It reminds me of that fucking Bills game. <laughs> <laughs> Encore with <laughs> Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Always think it's Sweet Home Alabama for some reason, though. And there we go. We go full circle with the Kid Rock shitting on two great song dustin jacobs you open with this is halloween with marilyn manson ghostbusters with marilyn manson and rob zombie living dead girl rob zombie how about that i opened with uh spooky okay love is kind of crazy with the spooky little boy like you then i close with monster mash okay encore with hotel california the eagles nice eddie I had a whole different list, and then Brianna inspired me. Oh, from you, grab you called an Brianna. audible. I called you an just audible. Killed. I just took the chalkboard and I erased it. Wow. And now I've written down a new open close encore. Shit, let's We're go. We're going to open with Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden. Ooh, We're going to close one. with Run to the Hills Ooh. by Iron Maiden. Yes. And then we're going to encore with Fear of the Dark by Iron Maiden. Damn, an Iron Maiden. If any band can bring those elements in, yes. it's Iron Maiden. So thank you, Brianna, Look at Brianna, for the audible. Cody? Uh, uh, abstain. Wow. I just, I this one <laughs> wow. just stumped wow. me. Just wow, that's that's kind of a fuck the Ramblers, right? That's that, that was. I mean, it's like a, that subtext of that was. Fun. Hey, would like you rather me bullshit the Ramblers and come up with some <laughs> thing oh, that was my heart? I was saying it? that the oh, subtext oh, felt a little oh, fuck oh, the Ramblers. Oh, Fuck the Ramber esque. A little bit. I'm the only one who's actually said those. Or you're the only one who's actually said those words. I'm the one who hasn't said those words. So fuck <laughs> subtext. Wow. 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 Saying wow. It wow. wow. <laughs> We're not even your favorite podcast. <laughs> That's, yeah. uh, um, you guys are number two now. <laughs> you were three. For 257, Alice Cooper. Let's go there. Mm. What would Alice Cooper open? Cody, you could do that one, right? I could do Alice Cooper. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Is that? Oh God! I just thought about this. Could this be a future Hall of Fame hat? Because I just thought about it. like late in a career resurgence hit song. What would who would what the Hall of Fame? Because hmm. Alice Cooper's Poison is up there. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, like that song was like, oh shit, he's back. I got a lot you of know? play on MTV. Right. I remember. Poison. I, that that. What to figure out how to really work that? You know, you know what I'm talking about, right, Cody? Like what you know, they're like, holy shit! They got they whipped another hit out that late in in the game, right? Like yeah. that might Elvis, Suspicious Minds in the Ghetto, those are two like you shit. He's back, yeah. You know, I don't know. That, that's a thought. We'll think about Good it. Idea. But next ramble two fifty seven. What would Alice Cooper open, close, and encore with? Now it's time to read books. And play video games. I'm reading books. I'm playing video games. Bring your pussy over here. We're reading books and playing games. Take it away, Eddie. Mm. Uh. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Mm. Can, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. Has Springsteen, is it true that he asked you for lessons before he toured again? Just to kind of Look, brush I up on his harmonica? I don't want to. I know he plays harmonic on his songs. Yeah, yeah. I don't want. And then, I don't want to get into. Okay, that, well then I'm gonna do this. I don't want to get into. All right, that. Cody, have you heard that urban legend that Nirvana ri- wrote and recorded holes uh, lived through this and mm-hmm. left a demo of it and that exists out there of just it's basically a Nirvana album. Yep, I've heard that. Okay, right. Blues Travelers Four album. <sighs> Eddie played all the po- harmonica what? parts for John Popper. That's that's. I heard that they took a break from the studio, and when they came back in, all of the harmonica was yep. like laid out. It was laid and out. They were and just like, like, "Whoa, we might as well, well keep it. Might as well keep it." And John Popper's not going to beat this. Yeah, and but, I also heard that Eddie 
I'm sorry, buddy. He's blushing. No, I just I, I there's certain legal things here I'm not allowed to say. Well, I'm just gonna say if you don't mind what I heard. I heard a rumor. I I, I heard a rumor that you had to scale it back so it could sound like John Popper. Like the first couple of takes are like, buddy, stop. What are you doing? You come Look, on. You can listen to it and make your own conclusion. Okay, <laughs> that's all I can say. All I can't right. legally right, say right, right. Yes or no. Right. Okay. I just was checking. I don't know. Damien Botriel, I've been reading The Making of Star Wars, a comprehensive collection of recollections from Lucas and everyone else involved in making the movie. Also started playing a new game with friends called Phasmophobia. I already love the title. An online team game where you go into a haunted house and gather evidence to discover what sort of ghost is there and try to avoid getting killed by it. Nice. It's creepy as fuck. Would love to see you three, three of you play at some point. Is this an a online team? Oh, we got to look this up. Phasmophobia. I'm hmm. down. Graham and Frey and Brianna, back to your favorite now, yeah, Brianna. Man. Graham, Faye, and Brianna reading books, playing games, and what little time has been spent in healthcare. I'm just trying to wrap my head around Enter the Gungeon. One of the funniest random NPCs I've run into thus far is this lost little adventure dressed in green with a master sword and shield who seems to have made a wrong turn in Albuquerque. That is awesome. There's a little Legend of Zelda <laughs> reference. Seems to have gotten turned around. This is going to be accurate, at least not anymore. Enter the Gungeon is so much fun. There are so many hilarious deep cut little gems peppered throughout this game and I hear that this game is off the hook fun when you get a group of four together to enter the gungeon a la gauntlet Ooh, style gauntlet hashtag style. pew pew nice. pew Caleb I've been recently playing Mario 64 in the N64 it's not quite how I remember but I still love it nonetheless I've learned how to l I've had to do long chain jumps together as well that's the best part I, don't, I never had a lot of play time on the N64 oh man I did I, I kind of went from Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis PlayStation to PlayStation see I I talked about this I stupidly was such an in I, I treated the Nintendo company like they were a hometown sports team, so I was like, <laughs> you were nope, just anything, I, anything Nintendo. Nintendo because of Legend of Zelda <laughs> that really pushed yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So I was like, no, nope, I'm not getting a Genesis. But I remember my dad, and my mom, were like, would you want? Something? Like, nope, just give me more Super Nintendo games. You know, like didn't give a shit about <sighs> a whole the Genesis. World out there. I know, and then didn't get, and then Nintendo sixty four. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm Nintendo. I'm jumping on this, even though everything's like, they're still doing cartridges. These guys are doing CDs. It looks a lot better. Fuck it. I'm Nintendo, Nintendo. So PlayStation 1, I was at, then I stayed Nintendo only to the GameCube. Okay. And then it happened. You made the Switch? Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, and I'm like, fuck, uh, I have to play this. Yeah. I can't not play this. Yeah. So I get an Xbox. Okay. Because a buddy of mine from high school worked at a GameStop. All right. So he would call me when the used ones would come in, and he would give me his discount. It was awesome. So, like, I would just pay him and he would buy it for me. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, so, right. so, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And then I'm in that GameStop and I'm like, okay, GameCube, Xbox, I'm good. <laughs> That's it. And then I see a demo for God of War on the Ooh. PlayStation 2 and I'm like, motherfucker. Ooh. And he was like, you know, we just got a PS2 used in. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> I had just gotten a payday <laughs> at work. I was like, Fuck, I, d I remember I got a payday for my job, and I had just done three one-nighters in a row. So I was rolling in money. You were just fucking throwing dollar and bills. And so I, I got the... So You're I making got a rain that in that thing. game stuff. I had to. So that was my... Yeah. But I was a purist like an idiot. Michael S. Miller, Caleb, and I recently set up our NES N64 GameCube and Wii U. So I've been all over the map with retro gaming, including Burger Time, Ooh, Burger Popeye, Time. the uh, Donkey Kong yeah. clone that was great. I love Popeye. Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, Friday the 13th, Super Mario Brothers, Elevator Action. Uh, elevator Action sounds like a porn. That was one of my favorite arcade games. Yes, it was. I don't, it, it I was it, awesome. It didn't feel like, to me, when I played it on the home system, it translated right. well. But in an arcade, in that arcade was, was my awesome. favorite Arcade Cody, game. if you saw a game called Elevator Action, do you think that's a love in an elevator porn It's tribute? like a Bang Brothers video, right? Yeah. Elevator Action. Yeah. You're talking Aerosmith's love in an elevator? Yes. Mm. Is that what you think it would be about? Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Can I go grab something real quick? Yeah, you absolutely Cody can. Cody and Eddie, dude, keep going. I'll be right back. Mm. 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 You can make fun of this. <laughs> what do you have to get? Oh, it's something exciting. Oh, it's something so like, he got up when we when I said love in an elevator Aerosmith. Yeah. And that made this him has think something, something sexual to do, right? Yeah, this is, is right? some sort of. What do, you, what do you have? I have what do, to, I what do you have? So, let let's just before I keep yeah, before yeah. I keep reading the emails, let me just say that I betrayed Eddie because we were planning on doing a TVG Toys vs. Games run. Oh yeah, and I didn't want to wait for him. No, he didn't wait. Oh no. So uh, Tony at TVG hit me up and said, "Hey, I have this in stock. I finally own it. Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo. One of the all-time great." role-playing games, one of the all-time, maybe the best, one of the top five Super Nintendo game ever. This thing is worth a fuckload. I traded in some Marvel Legends that we got, that I've been fortunate to get some extras yeah, of, yeah. and boom. It was a, like you said, no cash gets exchanged that place. It's the best. It's, 
<laughs> Straight up barter system. Straight up, there. I had some old Super Nintendo controllers. What if you went in one time and he was dressed like Tina Turner? I'd believe it. He's like, "Welcome to Barter Town." <laughs> Welcome to Barter Town. Because <laughs> that's what it's like in there. It's I love. That's why I love it. Toys versus games in Long Beach. Right barter there. Town. So I own Chrono Trigger. Ain't I'm we a so, pair? I'm so excited. Ragging about I had to sh- Cody. Does that make you a little jealous? I know you're a big Chrono Trigger guy. I know you have. A, I mean, how many Mondo? I'm, f- I'm fuming over here. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna be able to finish the show? I, that, are you gonna walk? Are you gonna Are you gonna be like Trump uh, with sixty minutes and just storm off the set? Like is, maybe. I mean, because I just want fairness. How many Chrono Trigger <laughs> posters do you have? Mondo posters of Chrono Trigger. I mean, I have a whole wall dedicated a whole to wall it. Wall dedicated to it, and and you know what? He had another copy of it. Oh, and he was like, "I'll give this to I'm you." I'm going to throw this one away. And I was like, it. "I'm good, man." So you just threw it away. So I'm sorry. Wow. I didn't realize. Not cool, dude. Cody. I know. Not, so cool. not cool. Not cool. That's whatever, man. I'm sorry. More bullshit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been playing also. Uh, K- Michael is with Doctor Mario, Ooh. Super Tech Mobile, good stuff. Mario 64, Star Wars: Shadows of the Empire. Is that the best non-canon Star Wars thing well, book? They- anything? I love that game. Yeah. Shadows of the Empire. Well, they treated the whole. The story as almost canon because it yeah. fell in between what Empire and Return of the Jedi, yep. and they yep. made a soundtrack for it. Yeah, they released a CD soundtrack. Yep. they wrote a book. Was that the Prince Zizor was yes. a villain? Has he gotten a Legends figure, a black figure? No, that would be dope. That'd be no. a cool exclusive. They brought his, uh, his the what was it the Black Sun? Yeah, I believe is they brought them into uh, Clone Wars and Solo. Uh, right? No, no, no. They what? mentioned them in Solo, right, but right, right, you right, actually right. see them in the Clone in the, Wars, and that's yeah. Zizor. That's who he led. Yes, the Black yeah. Sun Syndicate. Yeah. But Cody. it's interesting because they, they treated that almost like everything. They had everything to that but the actual but film. But the actual film. Cody, mm-hmm. would now how mad would you be if Eddie and I got Prince Zizor figures and didn't get you a Prince Zizor? I can only imagine what that would I be mean, to you. I would, I would walk out. <laughs> I, would leave, I, would, I might even leave the show <laughs> permanently. No one would blame you. No, no I, We know you're a big Prince no Zizor mark. <laughs> top uh, two villains you've ever two. <laughs> At least. Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and so much more. The last thing I read is actually really interesting. It was the actual shooting script for the final episodes of the recent Swamp Thing TV series. I bought it from the series Prop Master, which is a member of the Swamp Thing Facebook group I helped oh, wow. run. Really neat to read and an actual on-set script. That's pretty dope. That's and Michael cool. S. Miller is one who inspired me to get Swamp Thing for the NES and do my uh, oh, Retro Roach nice. video about it. Idea Man says, I'm reading Becoming Superman by J. Michael Straczynski. Pronounced, pronounced Straczynski. Mm-hmm. The family history he covers in this is wild as hell. J. Michael Straczynski is a great writer. You know, he wrote a lot of early He-Man episodes. Yeah. And he, Babylon 5 was his big, that was one of his big ones. And yeah, he's written some dope shit. That guy's a great one. Uh, Colin Maggs just finished the first five Necroscope books. I'm still working with Stephen King. Have done Carrie, The Shining Misery, and Reading the Dead Zone. Colin, I'm about to start the Necroscope book you sent us. So thank you for that. Uh, I just, I started the beginning and i loved it and i had some other books i had to read but once i'm done i'm going back to that one and i was really nice. digging it games have been playing until dawn great game uh though it's uh, more like a choose your own adventure book cross with the game brilliant graphics spooky as hell it's made me jump numerous times it's on the ps now catalog for anyone who subscribed to it darren butler not reading or playing anything my son has taken over the ps4 playing satan's game Fortnite, <laughs> that fucking game but a movie <laughs> suggestion spontaneous great movie kind of intense fun yeah. with a lot of heart all right it's, oh it's a great movie Oh, we covered it on our podcast a couple weeks ago. Nice. My kid plays Fortnite constantly. Yeah, Fortnite. So maybe that could be a reverse Goodwill hunting where Eddie and I see spontaneous. That could be Mm -hmm. we do that one. Dustin Jacobs is reading Natalie Portman's Fables. I'm a huge mark for Natalie Portman, so whatever she does, I'm there. This book, the book is classic three children's stories that she's reimagined with liberal. Uh, with a liberal lens, tortoise and the hare, three little pigs, country mouse and city mouse. The things that stuck out the most were the multiple flatulence references in the book. Apparently, Natalie, a Harvard graduate with a psychology degree, thinks children enjoy farts. They do. Well, they do. Adults enjoy farts. People that are honest with themselves enjoy farts. They're still funny. If you're honest with yourself, you know farts. Are you gold. think a fart is funny. Gold. The only people that don't think farts are funny are people who are dishonest with themselves. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And just want to not laugh at something. Exactly. Farts will always be funny. Uh, Dune is what I'm still reading. And I'm liking it better the second time, the Dune book. Okay. I'm liking it better. What's I know, he's a, being a turd, hon. Um, I've turd. Been, okay, can I, can I announce something very special yeah, here? Yeah, uh, Oh, look, he's, he's look mom. Look, what a brat. He's, he's mommy. Oh, get up. And he wanted you to go be with mommy. He's such a little punk. All right, so... Um, Super Mario Brothers 35. Yeah. Cody, remember I told you about that one too? It's on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. It's a game you're playing against 34 other people. Yeah. And you're playing the original Mario Brothers. Yeah. And, okay, your boy. I played it. Oh, I saw your post. 
first place finish. First place. I got it first. And then they have a special challenge where you play a harder thing of it where it just gets crazier. And it's like first place again, your boy. Wow. Twice. Wow. I climbed the mountain twice. Two-time champ. Are you putting that on your LinkedIn profile? Uh, fuck yeah, I'm putting it on my LinkedIn. <laughs> Two-time Super Mario 35 <laughs> champ? Absolutely. I've also been playing Dying back Light, which back. is fucking good. I'm doing a uh, Jerry Breaks the Game on that one nice. coming up soon. And, nice. uh, yeah, of course, still playing Animal Crossing, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, barely. Uh, but I'm still playing through Predator Hunting Grounds. I'll still jump on that one every now and again. And, of course, um, uh, the the Star Wars Squadrons. Yes, I played the opening of that. It is fucking fun. I can't wait. I can't imagine how much more crazy it is in VR. I know. I can't wait. But like playing, just see, and it, and it uh, not to, just first yeah, mission, yeah. but you start as a Tie Fighter. If you choose to be a Rebel, you start as a Tie Fighter guy. Like you're 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 a, a, a rookie pilot following your boss, and like halfway through the mission, he defects to the Rebels. Oh, it's really? fucking so you, awesome. Do you have to decide then if you were? No, you no, no. That's go? when you decide before. I don't know how it goes if you decide to be Empire. Oh. But then you just, and then like, and then you quickly switch perspective and you're no longer that person. And then you're a TIE fighter, uh, an X-Wing trying to help that dude escape. It's fucking awesome. Wow. It's really, it, yeah, cool. it's a pretty cool opening. It, it's a really fun little thingy. So yeah. You reading anything? Playing anything? Nothing right now. Cody? I uh, know, but we're taking a week off of our show this uh, upcoming week, so nice. I might start. I got bought that new Kindle that I, I've been yeah. to, to start using, so I'll probably start reading something this week. Okay. I don't know what yet, though. I'm going to guess you're going to read all those erotic fairy tale things that Anne Rice wrote as a pseudonym, like the erotic adventures of Snow White, Cinderella. Mm. And, like, oh. Well, I am now. There now that it I know is. that it exists. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there, see? That's Cody, where she gets the, the, the doors run a train on her, right? They run a train on her. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got to scratch ideas out of my sketchbook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, been there, done that, pal. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work we go. You know, I just thought <laughs> Andrea had an idea. I forgot what it was. I was like, it was pretty good. I'm like, you should call Invent Help. And she's like, fuck that. That's a scam. I bet. And I bet it is. I bet if you call Invent Help with some idea, they'd be like, oh, oh someone's already done that. Sorry. And, and then they write that motherfucker down. They're and, gone with it. And they're gone. Oh, thanks. But someone already uh, did sorry, that. Sorry. That's a stupid idea. So if anyone works work. for Invent Help, we're fucking on to you. Figured that shit But if out. Invent Help wants to sponsor the Ramble, we will send run people this, your way. We are going to take this back. We'll send everybody quick. your way. <laughs> we will. Um, let's do. It's time. Oh, my God. Ooh, we're here. We're here. We've arrived. We've made it. Uh -oh, it's it the time of the show where we rank the top five. five. No one knows. No one knows anymore. Honey, do you know that? Uh, Eddie. Uh, I'm sorry. A rumor. The Blues Traveler? Their album four that had like, Rye wanna give me run around and the hood. He recorded all the harmonica parts for John Popper. I can't. It, it's, yeah. It's Legal, a rumor. Legally, I can't say that. And anything. guess what else he had to do? You had a feeling he had to tone it back so they would wouldn't think it was him. And oh wait, that's yeah. First couple of takes, I'm like, buddy, this we're is we're gonna get a cease and desist on this show if you guys don't. All right, I, I just, just I'm proud of you. Thanks. Sorry, not, I can't. Fuck. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't thanks because I'm not confirming anything. Cody, mm -hmm. what what music shop do you go get your stuff at? Do you go to Guitar uh, Center? Well, when I used to go places, yes, yes. Back, uh, I, back, I, at the yeah. San Antonio Guitar Center, the harmonica mm -hmm. section is just called the Pence Room, right? Yes. At, see, you didn't know. I bet you didn't know that the San Antonio. Well, I, well I it says know that. that this I this room know. was donated. Uh, well, the products in this room were donated by harmonica legend Buddy Pence. <laughs> I think, see, I we, we I know about what you do. We know about stuff. what you. I can't. I can't and I know. And that. and this is in Texas. There could be posters of Billy Gibbons, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Andy yeah, Timmons. The, the, it's just a giant thing of Eddie playing a harmonica, right? Well, that's that why he did it in Texas, because he right. wanted to take the heat off right. in California. So right, right. He's seen here in, in, in Texas, where yeah. he is a legend. They're going to shut us down. They're gonna, and then where's the Eddie statue? Is it the San Antonio? Har uh, guitar center or is that a, is that the Austin guitar center? No, it's center? It, it's you know so like if you've ever uh, seen the a where ACL is taped, there's a statue of Willie Nelson outside. Yes, side. yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. The other side of the building, there's a statue of Eddie. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, and then I think that's where the Stevie Ray Vaughan statue used to be, and they mm -hmm. moved it to make room for the. That, that right. was not my idea. <laughs> I forgot that was not my idea of you playing. I did not. I said no. Put me beside him. Yeah, right. Don't remove him. Yeah, and they were like, son. 
I know you, you, you from up north. I cast too long you of a can't. shadow, I think, was their exact yeah, word. Yeah, <laughs> And now, top five horror movie villains: uh, Damien Batriel, um, the Deeps, Deeps, the Deeps, the Deeps, DBs. Uh, Deeps. Top five horror movie villains. I'm not a big horror movie guy, so my picks are a little out of the box. Pennywise, a dancing clown from the It television movie. Uh-huh. Everyone in Carrie. Carrie White was the hero of that story. That is not that wrong. The mom is way more evil and creepy. Well, than it's Carrie. like the mayor is the hero, is yeah, the evil person in Jaws. Jaws. Cody, it's have you seen Carrie? Uh, yes, long, long time ago. I might have to. Fuck it. We could just do horror movies on Good we Will. Could. Um, Number three, Dr. Frankenfurter from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Number two, The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. And number one, Hannibal Lecter, yeah. The Silence of the Lambs. Work has been getting busy. As things start to open up again, we all head into Christmas, so I haven't been able to see Jerry struggle in video games as much as I'd like. I know Cody is hyped for the new Willow series coming to Disney+. Plus. Thanks for another week of laughs. Cheers, Damien Bottrell. <laughs> oh, Cody must have lost his mind when he saw that. Did you, guys, did you guys know that there was a Willow movie? They're making a TV what? series, but there was a apparently a movie. There was a movie? Get, yeah. get the fuck out of here. What? We got to see yeah. that, I guess. Um, Nathan, Nathan Wallace, top five. Jason Voorhees, Leatherface, Wolfman Werewolves, Dracula slash Vampires, number one, Freddy Krueger, the Krugs. And they're the Krugs. Ramble on Nathan Wallace. Michael Newcomer, don't call me Michael Newcomer, don't call me Wormer right. Roman. Allison Williams from Get Out. The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. Eh. Honorable nod to Janosch in, Goosebu- in Ghostbusters 2. Kathy Bates in Misery. Jack Nicholson as Jack Torrance in The Shining. And number one, Cujo. I didn't even know anyone in the early 80s that wasn't afraid of St. Bernard's after this movie came out. After last week's ramble, I think we need a Goodwill of Hunting with Beverly Hills Cops 1 and 2. I like to pretend the third one never existed. Happy Halloween, everyone. Mike. Cody, would you be down with doing a Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2? I've seen w- one. Oh, okay. so. That's what right. was yeah. three? Three was the one with the roller coaster. That's the one Landis directed. As that was Eddie was Murphy part. in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't remember three. It was not good. I remember two. Two remember wasn't three. bad. Two wasn't bad. I don't... Two gave us the maybe Bob Seger's best song, Shake Down, Break Down, Damn. You Busted. The... <laughs> there's, a, there's a four coming. Oh, there is. There I is could, on I Netflix. I could, well, I could see. Well, I mean, dude, he's back. He's back. I could see. Uh, that. Josh Stett's top five. Calling a slight audible here. Going only with villains specifically from Clive Barker because okay. I'm such a huge fan of his. Number five, Nick's from Lord of Illusions. Illusions, psycho cult leader that could cheat death with real magic. Candyman, Bloody Mary type urban legend turned to real thing. No one other than Tony Todd and his voice could have played that role. The sequel gave some backstory into his origins, was making him a pretty tragic character. Number three, Mahogany from the Midnight Meat Train. Another priceless casting choice with Vinnie Jones. Works in a slaughterhouse by day, murders people on the subway at night to make sacrifices to creepy immortal beings. Sidebar, Bradley Cooper plays the main character who's trying to figure out who Mahogany is and why he's killing people. In the Silver Linings playbook, he takes Jennifer Lawrence on a date to the movies when they walk out. Midnight, I didn't know that. That's like one of the first things Bradley Cooper ever did. That's yeah. a, not a half bad movie, Midnight Meat Train. Uh, number two, Dr. Decker from Nightbreed. David Cronenberg portrayed the psychiatrist serial killer framing Boone for his murders to a T. Cool, calculated, and pure psycho, and easily one of the greatest masks in all of horror cinema. Cody, have you seen Nightbreed? No. Eddie, have you seen Nightbreed? I don't think so. We, got, we might need to do that one because that's basically Clive Barker doing what if like a horror movie and i think it's what the new mutants was maybe trying to be it's basically a horror film with the x-men mm. but with a ton of them like they're adults children it's just all these creatures with special powers who are persecuted and hunt it's fucking dope as shit man nightbreed's a great fucking and david cronenberg is so creepy as the villain uh and he goes number one who else but the hell priest his name isn't pinhead that's the makeup crew started calling him because there wasn't really a name other than male cenobite doug bradley helped create the ike an icon that instills not just fear but admiration for some of the best one-liners this side of arnold graham and frey and brianna Mm. Faye, aliens the queen number four freddy krueger number three sweeney todd number two chucky and number one nancy downs of the craft brianna goes jigsaw it uh, from Penny, Pennywise from it, the alien face hugger chase burster, chest burster, Annie Wilkes from Dolores Claiborne, and Hannibal Lecter's are number one. Gra- Graham goes Captain Rhodes, Jack Torrance, John Ryder from The Hitcher, The Crate from Creep Show, and Tar Man from The Return of the Living Dead is his number one. And then they provide us this image of like literally all of them hanging out. That's, awesome. That's a cool picture. Stay safe, Ramblers. Ramble off. Graham and Faye and Brianna. Winnipeg, eh? Patrick Carruthers. Necronomicon from the Evil Dead, the Hellraiser Cenobites, Michael Myers, Jack Torrance, and then Hannibal Lecter. Stay safe. Vote 
Have a fun Halloween from PC. Mm. Caleb, Ghostface. I mostly put Ghostface on here uh, because he got so many copycats following in his footsteps. That's the scream guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Michael Myers, the super eerie silence of Michael is terrifying. I'm currently watching the movie uh, off and on with my dad, Michael. Freddy Krueger, I just watched the original Nightmare on Big Screens. Freddy had no chill. Love him so much, honestly. Number two, Sam Trick or Treat. Much as I like Michael Myers, he's silent and eerie to me. I love it. And number one, Jason Voorhees. Where do I even start? Once a drowned little boy, he soon had to watch his mom get decapitated at the end of Friday 1. In part four, he finally dies to the likes of Tommy Jarvis. Part five, didn't see Jason, but a copycat killer named Roy after seeing his son die. The very next movie, he becomes a freaking zombie. After nine, he becomes, well, a demon? I don't know. It's a bad movie. No offense goes to hell fans. After being shot by a robot on a spaceship, the very next movie becomes a half-robot, half-human cyborg. He fights our number three here, Freddy, in part 11, I think, but he finally got a reboot, but I haven't seen it. Anyways, thanks for all I've got to say now. Stay safe, my spooky friends, and wear your masks. Thank you, Caleb. Cody, did you see the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot? I mean, the Friday the 13th reboot? I did not see that one. No, I was actually, you know, when I was going to give my list, say that I'm I'm not the biggest horror film person, right. and the only either Nightmare on Elm Street or Freddy the Friday the Thirteenth movie I've seen is Freddy versus Freddy Jason. versus Jason. That's <laughs> so that is yeah. uh, which is an inter- that actually had one of the most oddly poignant moments in any of the f- Jason ones is when you see inside Jason's psyche, and he's just a guy who just seems to just laboriously just kill children and send them into this limbo like these counselors it was remember that where he's just walking into that cabin with a dead kid and he just tosses them and there's just a bunch of and there's no joy there's no anything he just does it it was a very interesting Mm. weird little shot in that movie that that was kind of and something else i'll say real quick about jason Voorhees. it's rare that in the fourth movie is when they really take off with it (laughs) you know what i mean because the first one was his mom right the second one was him, the third one, but the third one he finally puts on the hockey mask. Yeah. The fourth one really puts it all together. Yeah. The fourth one is like the quintessential, this is this is the one Slasher, to watch. Slasher, hockey mask. Yeah, yeah man. Jason Whoa, get the fuck out of here. My cousin Jackie, I hope everything's okay. Huh? Um, but yeah, so it was weird. Uh, odd that it, it took part four. Yeah. Michael S. Miller, top five horror villains. Uh, number five, Kurt Barlow, the master from the 1979 TV miniseries Sam's Lot. Such a great look. He still freaks me out whenever he's on the screen. Number four, Leatherface. I mean, come on. He makes masks out of other people's faces. And because uh, his fan- he and his family eat people. Fuck all that. I'll never go in the ocean because of Jaws. I'll never go to Texas because of Leatherface. <laughs> number three, Freddy Krueger. Well, I'll admit that a lot of the later Elm Street movies are a bit corny. The original Nightmare on Elm Street is amazing. And that version of Freddy is a nightmare, including... No pun intended. Uh, and Inducing. Nightmare inducing. No pun intended. Number two, Michael Myers. Can't go wrong with a silent homicidal maniac in a ghost white rubber Shatner mask. And number one, Jason fucking Voorhees. Friday the 13th Part 2 is my first horror movie, so Jason will always be my favorite horror villain. Although you could argue that Jason isn't a villain at all. Jason's a victim. He was bruised, bullied, ignored, left to drown, and forced to survive in his own on the woods. Poor Jason. Poor, poor Jason. All right, I'm out of here. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. Enough with the whole let's see if we can get Dex's contract voided. Talk Dex is the heart and soul of the Ramble wow. Radio, and you know it. It would be an absolute tragedy if you got rid of Dex. Oh. Everybody thinks of Hordak. Hashtag oh, Ramble then, on. Yeah. Hashtag Eddie for life. It's going to be tough. It no. is. It's going to be tough on him. Hashtag damn it, Dex. Hashtag no Dex, no peace. Hashtag no anti-Cody hashtag this week. Oh. Okay, take care. Stay safe, everybody. Michael S. Miller, Charles Phillips, top five. Honorable mentions go to the Mummy and Dracula from the Monster Squad. Also, Nazis and Monster Squad. That tattoo. I think Nazis German in guy. general. They're always good horror. <laughs> the slide spot of seeing his tattoo and saying, now you now you mention it. Now that you mention it, I really do. When he's told that he knows a lot about monsters. Monsters still chills me to this day. The Graboids from uh, Tremors. Number four, the vaginal dentata, the pussy teeth from the movie oh, Teeth. That's awful. Because let's face it, getting your dick bitten off during sex is frightening. Yes. Number three, Chucky. Being a, char- uh, being a Charles, I got tormented with that little redheaded doll. Number two, Gilman. He used to scare the shit out of me, especially from Monsters or Gilman from Monsters Squad, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh-huh. And number one, Wolfman. Let's face it, the werewolf is the scariest monster of all time because he has nards. Idea Man, Andrew mentioned a white privilege and get out. Number five, Cleopatra from Freaks, a trapeze artist who manipulates one of the dwarfs in the freak show of circus she works for so that she and her strongman boyfriend can murder him and inherit all of his money. Her fate at the end of the movie is as terrifying as it is fitting. The Killer from Popcorn, name with hell because it's a spoiler. If you haven't seen this 1991 horror classic, it, the full movie is on YouTube and you should watch it. A group of film students is hosting an all-night marathon of gimmick horror movies and someone is using the gimmicks from those movies to kill the students off as the movies are playing. So much fun. Number one, the Xenomorph, I mean, number three, 
the Xenomorph from Alien. Number two, Freddy Krueger from A New Nightmare. And number one is Red from Us. Absolutely terrifying, absolutely mesmerizing performance. Colin Maggs, honorable mentions, the werewolves, the aliens, the Frankensteins, monster, amazing characters, but are evil by nature of circumstances rather than choice. Also, Jason, Michael Miles, Mike, Michael Myers, etc. basically the mute slasher, as it's been done so many times. They're starting to morph into each other. Annie Wilkes, misery. She still creeps me out. And is there anything scarier than being helpless, trapped by a psycho who's quote unquote caring for you? Yes, yeah. Side note, the hobbling is so much worse in the book. Fuck yeah, it is. Oh, God. Uh, number four, Freddy Krueger. Number three, Jigsaw, the Saw franchise. Psycho putting you in a fiend of death trap of twisted ways to escape them all so you appreciate your life more. Great character idea. Pennywise from It, the source of many clown fears, brilliantly portrayed twice in movies, though Tim Curry's my favorite. And number one, Dracula. Who else? Intelligent, immortal, endlessly evil, and in so many great films with this character. Thank you for all you do. All the ramblers stay safe, healthy, and happy. From the man who thought Buffalo Bill's dance was less creepy than Tobey Maguire's in Spider-Man 3, <laughs> Colin Maggs. <laughs> Darren Butler, uh, you go honorable mention to Angela from Sleepaway Camp. What the fuck candy man tony todd's amazing scared the shit out of him and is still attracted to him at the same time fuck yeah henry from henry portrait of serial killer michael rooker's terrifying who thought he would have me crying years later in guardians 2 right number three jason Voorhees. the first two are classics and jason x pure genius number two freddie krueger enough said and number one the necronomicon this motherfucker here just leave ash the fuck alone for fuck's sakes it also appears in jason goes to hell that's it love you guys y'all keep me thousands you keep me in thousands of others laughing and that's an amazing gift thank you so much thank you buddy ramble the fuck on and long live Jizz Nation. Nation. DB. Dustin <laughs> Jacobs, uh, humans in any horror, in any zombie film. The Mom and Psycho, The Xenomorph and Alien, Michael Myers from Halloween, Reagan from The Exorcist. Mm. My number five, I went Pinhead. Okay. Or the hell guy. Right, yeah, right, right. Co uh, you're, Cody, you're number five. Uh, my number five is Jigsaw. Ooh. Um, Pennywise. Is Pennywise. My, my uh, I went number four, Freddy. Because the only reason I had a number four is because he's really creepy in one movie and then he's just an insult comic for all the other. He's just a violent, psychotic insult comedian. He's the Joker. For the right, he's just uh, like, yeah. That's why I went Freddy number four and not higher. Cody, uh, number four is the thing. The thing, Ooh. so good. I went uh, Annie Wilkes, Kathy Bates from uh, oh, Misery because so that could fucking happen. That and could that's happen. That's really scary. That is, about. Oh god, it's so fucking scary. That's that's what the scare. Uh, you haven't seen the original Wicker Man, have you? Mm, I don't think so. Cody, have you seen you've seen just a Nicolas Cage one, right? Just the Cage one. Because yeah. Christopher Lee is the leader of, of this cult in this village in that movie. And Chris Lee said it's the scariest movie I've ever filmed because you know Dracula's not real. Yeah. But he goes, the wick that could be happening yeah. in some fucking island right now yeah. somewhere. Like, that's... Yeah. Uh, my number three, I went Jason. Big J. Hmm. Cody, your number three. Jack Torrance. Oh, so good. Nice. I went uh, Freddy Krueger. The Freddy. From the first one. Of course. My number two, Jaws. Jaws. Just sca shark. still scared the fuck out of me. Still, that is still a. The, I mean, I, again, didn't the I asked about that last week, and you said that wasn't valid. I didn't ever said that. I said <laughs> Jaws that at the end of. I thought I asked at the end of last week if Jaws counted. I think it has I think to it count. Counts. Yeah, I'm gonna play back the tape after All this right. episode. I might have so. fucked you, Cody. I Look think you me. might have because I left it out. Look at me putting Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> about well, wait. I'm talking about the Jaws from Jaws Four, though. Right, because it remembers. It had a because yeah, because it had a motive. It hunted down right. the family to the. It, it was followed aware. him to the Caribbean. Yes. It went from Maine to the Caribbean. It followed. But he was him. just seeking revenge. He yes. wasn't a horror victim or a horror. Right. So I I go Jaws. You're number two, Cody. Sorry, uh, Michael man. Myers. Oh yeah, I don't know why. Okay, anyway, you're number. number I went Jaws. Two. Number Jaws. two. Hey! I'm still afraid of the ocean because yes. of Jaws. Yes. My number one. Who else could it? Dracula. The guy's a fuck. He's been in ten million horror movies. I got to go Dracula for number one. Cody? Uh, Hannibal Lecter. Oh, yeah. That's my number one. Look at that. Because that shit could really happen. That shit could be real. Dracula's my number one. Uh, I, I was thinking about putting Frankenstein, but I'm like, he wasn't evil. He was just a. He was the ultimate victim of bullshit. Yeah. Like, he didn't ask for any of that no, shit. No, he just got put together, and, and then they was like, a brain right, in there, here, they woke go. him up, and like, all right, go fuck be head. normal now. Be normal. God. All right, Ramble 257. I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> Top five movies about robots. <laughs> Cody, could you do this? Daryl, number one. Daryl, number one, huh? How is Ex Machina <laughs> not up there? That's got to be up oh, there, yeah. right? Daryl's number one. Daryl's number Data one. Data analyzing robot youth life form. Great. I haven't seen AI. <laughs> Should I see AI or is it Ew. worth seeing mm, mm. for this list? Daryl's better. Daryl's better. Okay. I remember thinking AI was a ripoff of Daryl anyway. It is. 
That's Daryl. Uh, well, there we go. That's our ramble. Cody's going to find out if I fucked him or not. You all can email to ramble at the ramblepod.com. Did I shoot down Jaws in the last episode? <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at Podcast Ramble One, Instagram at Podcast Ramble. Go to Hemp Vita, type in the ramble as a promo code, and you get 15% off nice. everything. Go give us a five star rating and a positive sex review. You know where to follow us. You know where to find us. We love you all. Stay safe. We're going to see you tomorrow, though, for a good willow hunting. Here we are. Tango and cash. Tango. We previewed it with some Jack Palance action today. And uh, yeah, it's the last beep, and we love you. There we go. You don't love it. That's loving nothing. That's loving nothing. So, Cody, did they think I fucked you on that? Uh, I think so. I've got the video from last week up, and I'm trying to find it. <laughs> He's going to the video tape. He's going to the tape. He, <laughs> Cody, man, is that the first ramble challenge flag? Wow. Did Cody he toss the first? The red flag. I'm throwing the red flag. He reached into the sock, and he pulled that motherfucker. Hey, uh-uh. We are challenging. What if he's wrong? What? What? He's got to be penalized for being wrong. wrong. I know. Yeah, you lose a timeout. I don't. I don't think he I'm can't wrong challenge. On this. You can't challenge again for another three rambles. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll let you know next week because we've already yeah. recorded all the other things. <laughs> sadly. Oh man, we love you guys. Bye. Bye.